Hello, everybody, and welcome to Girl Club. You know where you are. This is the place where real girls have real talk about real issues while seeking always to apply real faith. And I just want to say I'm super, super, super excited today to have someone in studio with the girls and I um, that I, it's somebody I've known a long time, um, but I met him through his films. In fact, his films impacted not just my life, but the lives of thousands of young people that we were fortunate enough to screen his films for in my son's time at the University of Kansas. Now, his films have made their way all around the world. And um, I just want to introduce him before we dive into a whole lot of thoughts that I have about him and a whole lot of questions that the girls are going to have. And... Um, and for those of you watching, I want you to just send your questions in as we live stream through the day if you're joining us through Cynthia Garrett Ministries' YouTube channel so that we can interface. We definitely want you involved in this dialogue. The other thing is if you're listening on podcast, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, you know, you can find us weekly on your favorite podcast platforms. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all of the platforms wherever you're seeing us. So, Darren Wilson. Darren Wilson is a documentary filmmaker whose films focus on creatively and powerfully advancing the kingdom of God all around the world. Darren's films have been seen by millions of people globally. His first five films, five, Finger of God, Furious Love, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, and Holy Ghost Reborn have helped change the spiritual climate of the church worldwide. His new film, The God Man, is set to release in theaters on June 6th. June 6th, pay attention, June 6th, 2023. It is a special one night only movie premiere of The God Man. You can find out which theater near you it's playing in by actually going to I believe it's Fathom Events, F-A-T-H-O-M. The link is in the description here. Or you can go to uh, the Godman website, thegodmanfilm.com. Check it out. Find out where it's playing near you. And make sure that you get your church behind it. Get your classroom. Get your sports team. You can go in groups. You can go um, individually. Uh, we're really doing all we can to get the body of Christ out on June 6th to actually see and experience this film. Because you know what? If we can sell out across this nation, then what we send is a message that people are interested in Jesus. And you know what? Even if you can't go, you can still go online and buy 10 movie tickets and gift them to somebody. Buy 20, buy 100 and gift them to everyone in your church support this film. Now I have a personal stake in supporting this film because I executive produced this film. That's how much I believe in Darren and the quality and content of this film. But a little bit more about Darren. He's also written three books, one of which completely rocked my world. Um, he's written Filming God, which details his journey out of skepticism into faith in the supernatural. He's written Finding God in the Bible, a book about friendship with God, which is absolutely incredible, you guys. And his latest book, Chasing a God You Don't Want to Catch, is amazing. In it, he wrestles with some of the trickier questions about God that he has struggled with throughout his life. His books are fantastic, okay? Darren, nobody ever makes a big deal about your books because there, there's so much to do and hoopla about your movies. But I got to say, I love your books. I love your books. I love your books. And that's probably because you are at heart a beautiful writer, a beautiful man of faith. And you just have an amazing way of making the gospel real. Devon Franklin, former vice president of production for Columbia Pictures, calls Darren one of the most innovative filmmakers 
and authors of faith today. I agree with that. So before we get started, I want to get your regular tribe, the girls, my co-host in studio, Nova Page, Christina Reynolds, and Christina Boudreaux. It's good to see you guys. Finally reunited. <laughs> yeah, finally. Yay. It's, it's, Yay. it's, uh, well, you guys don't know that there's been a little interruption with travel schedules and, and, and a little time off because we keep the, the, the podcast going and the show going. Um, we've gotten to have a couple of weeks down, which has been really wonderful and blessed. And I mean, you guys, before I roll the trailer on this, I, just like initial now, Christina Reynolds, I know you've seen the film. Nova, I know you've seen the film. Boudreaux, I know you haven't seen the film yet, <laughs> dealing with the roof falling on your head. However, and that's great because I, I really want us to have a variety of opinions and conversation when we're talking today. And you got to remember that the audience hasn't seen it yet either. So yes, Power of a Virtuous Woman, writing in, the gang is all here. We are. Whoop, whoop. So you guys, I'm just curious, Nova and Christina, like, your knee-jerk reaction to the movie. Well, I'll tell you my son, who is a 22-year-old uh, graduate from college, who is very skeptical even about Christian films. And so um, we watched it and he was like, now that, that is an amazing film. Like it touched his heart so deeply. Um, I think the story, I mean, I just don't want to give anything away, but the yeah. story is so, you just want to know, like, how in the world did that happen? So I, I we were, all of us were just sitting there, jaw dropped. And, and in fact, my husband, the, I, am I allowed to say there's a rabbi in the film? But he was like, I got to, I got to see that again, because I have to like soak everything that he was sharing. I got to, I got to just really go back. I need to go to the theater. So he's just, we're all just really excited about it, So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, 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 and Reynolds, just to, I'd love to get oh. a quick knee jerk. <laughs> it was so good. You know, I've seen um, all of his previous films and, you know, so I was expecting, Oh, it's going to be really a certain way. <laughs> I'm I, like, now that Noah's being so good about like not sharing too much, I, I thought it would be a lot big in your face but I think there was this beautiful like focused zoned in on like individuals and just like how God cares so much to the point that he would direct like it's it, honestly it seemed like God directed the film is what it felt like yes. and that and, and but there was simplicity in it that made me just fall in love with Jesus all over again so I loved it it was not yes. it was not what I expected but like in a very wonderful way that's all I'll say Yes. For now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I agree that it, it seems like God directed it. And I'm going to I'm going to stop there. Anna, back in the studio, I'm going to ask if you'll roll the trailer. I want you guys to take a look at the trailer for The God Man, a brilliant and beautiful film that is being called the new Jesus film for this generation. That is a big, big, big statement. The Jesus film for this generation written and directed by filmmaker and friend Darren Wilson. Let's take a look at the trailer and then we're gonna get Darren in studio to talk with us about this film, his journey and everything that could possibly be because of this movie. Podcast, what you're the question, missing. who is Jesus, is probably one of the most profound questions. And you notice that this was one of the major questions in the New Testament that um, Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? It's not even a possibility for Jesus to be anything else other than the Messiah. He's either a madman or he is the Messiah. He is. He was and is the God-man. That means he was God 
as though he were not man. He was man as though he were not God. I'm not perfect, nobody else is. Why would I want to join that club? <laughs> because he's perfect. And I was dead and now I'm alive. And it's not about a club, it's not about a building, it's about a man. It's, it's about a man named Jesus. And it has nothing to do with how many I have in my church attendance or followers on Instagram, or how many people I have watching a TV show. None of that, none of that is a savior. He is the savior. You don't know him until you meet him. For those of you listening on podcasts, what you you obviously miss a little bit of the power of that trailer, but um, so I invite you to pop us up and 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 watch watch us live stream, um, so you can see the Godman trailer. But I think we should just get Darren in studio, um, and I I, I want to bring you in. Hi, Darren. Hey. What I, I every time I see the trailer, I get. It still makes me weepy. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I watched it with uh, Christian, my son. And um, no, actually with my niece, Summer, my 23-year-old niece, who's, who sometimes pops in and out of here uh, on Girl Club. She's our, our teen tribal member. And she loved it. Like we both cried together over. <laughs> Christina, you said the simplicity of it. And I think that's really really a powerful statement. Darren, what is different about this film than your last films in your words? Because there is yeah. a beautiful simplicity. Yeah. And that was the goal. Um, I, you know, with this one, it was, a, it was, it was kind of the last one of, of my, this journey of films, the six, six film journey. And, and, you know, going in, it's a movie about Jesus. And I just, for me, I'm like, I, I, cannot screw this one up. You know what I mean? Like the other ones were kind of all of my other films have been like my journey into a new something or other. So whether it was like miracles for finger of God or, you know, trying to rediscover what God's love looks like for, for furious love or the father, which I knew I didn't understand correctly or the Holy ghost, which the Holy spirit, which I was, you know, terrified of. It was all, all of them were me kind of going on this, this journey of discovery. Whereas with Jesus, it was more about, there's, I wasn't, it wasn't a, I had just gone on a 15 year discovery to, to find out who he really is. And so now it was all, this movie is all about, I just want to show the world, my best friend. I want to show, I want to show him as I've come to know him. And, uh, and so it's, it, you know, kind of like I, I tried to stay away from like kind of the bigger personalities that, like, that I've had in, in my past films and just really the focus was just laser on uh on just the nature and the character and the person of jesus and so that it, yeah it definitely i'm glad christina that you that you saw that because that was definitely a, a a big goal of mine is to just really keep it like about one thing hmm. you know i guess um if i could ask you any one question um to kind of start us off this the the final statement in the in the trailer says you don't know him until you meet him mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so true you know it's it's just i think about my own life and and you can you can say you know jesus 
you can live, say you live for Jesus. You can say you're a Christian. You can go to church every week. You can be involved in church. You can do all these great things in his name. Now, the flip side of all of that is we all know the scripture that says many of you will say, I did great things in your name, Lord. And, and I will say to you, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. You never knew me. What? So that makes me, I guess, so aware of how big that statement is. You know, you don't know him until you meet him. Who is the Jesus that you met in making this film and in your journey, in your life? Who is he? Because you clearly met him because I can feel it all over the film, Darren. Mm -hmm. That that's mm -hmm. that's the the truth of, I think, the statement made earlier that it was almost like it was directed by God. All of your films, I know, are very personally directed by God for you. You you very much try to listen to the Holy Spirit and do what you feel you're truly being told to do. Um, yeah. So who have you met? Who is this Jesus? Um, well, <laughs> that's a big question. Um, I, all I can tell you is I've met... Um, somebody who is far better than I ever could have imagined who loves me more than I could ever deserve. Um, and he really, you know, we growing up, it, it's all, it, we always use these kind of platitudes, like he's the savior of the world. And you know what, what, for, especially for this movie, what I like to focus on is he's the savior of the one. Um, because mm -hmm. the world is such a nebulous kind of like thing, you know, it's like, it's like, just it's it's just kind of out there it doesn't really mean a whole lot um but when you when you're talking about he's a savior to you like he's he pulled you out of darkness he pulled me out of darkness um that's really what i tried to focus on in this film is just showing that he's he, like just how radically he will pursue people um yeah. just, just like one person right like it's not about big meetings it's not about big conferences it's not church, you know, he's not church, <laughs> mm -hmm. but he, he's, he goes after literally, he goes after you like nobody else um, can or will. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, I think that's the piece that just got to me, Darren. I was like, while there was this simplicity for the one, there were these big moves that you made because God was saying, do this, Darren, go right. here, yeah. move there. And all the things that had to happen and not happen in order for the one, in order for the one, it was just so beautiful. And you can't orchestrate that. You can't make that no. happen. That is only God. And that is you tuning. I'm like, I was like, man, he just tuned his ear into the heart of the father. And he just moved in obedience and to watch it all unfold and watch people not get to the place where they were like, I there's nothing better than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't trade him for yeah. billions, millions. I wouldn't trade him. And yeah. I think that's, I, I, and honestly, it made me just go, huh, can I say that? Yeah. Yeah, it was really, really um, no condemnation, but definitely felt that like, man, it would it, it, it takes me back a moment to go. Let me let me sit back and ask myself those really important and deep questions where where have I made Jesus a religious figure and not an intimate friend? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Darren, there's a scene in the movie uh, to your point, Nova. Um <laughs> where one of the guys and, and you'll 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 all know when you see the film but basically he's living in a situation that most of us would go oh my god let me pray for you to get help let me pray for you to be delivered from here let me pray for creature comforts and a hotel room for, for you know and a whole <laughs> truckload of regular food and this guy talks about how these christian missionary groups they always come and they all want to pray for him and about five words in he's like no 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 no. let me pray for you <laughs> because the western church has their focus on not being poor 
but also that you can't be happy and poor. There's a there's a big mess in perspective in the Western church. You can't be effective in ministry and not have millions of viewers. You can't be fulfilled and not have a ton of money. You can't be happy and not be on everyone's guest list. Like there's a major, major mistake in identity in the Western church. And I think he so beautifully slid that point home. Um, what is it like for you, Darren, to hear statements like that? Are you having your own paradigm shifted when you're filming a, a movie like this? Or is this stuff that you kind of, you already know when you're grateful that God is actually affirming and co-signing this for the world to, to know? No, uh, how, I always, how I always describe it to people is I'm, I, as much as you're getting stretched um, in an hour and a half, two hour period, um, I'm getting stretched like that for, in this case, three years. It took three years to, to make this movie because of the pandemic. Uh, but usually it's over, you know, typically my films, it takes me about seven to seven to nine months to, to film them all. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's very, I mean, I'll, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there crying while I'm interviewing them. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a very, very powerful, you know, moments to, to when I meet these people and I see, you know, kind of, I don't want to say it, but what, what true, true christianity actually is supposed to look like you know you're talking about marcus he's a missionary in rio de janeiro and you know and they just they deal with the poorest of the poor and just really really difficult difficult things and he's just he's the self-described happiest person in the world like you know and and for him he says jesus is the answer literally to everything mm. to, to any any problem in the world jesus is the answer and the problem that we have is that's not really how we look at things, kind of to yeah. your point, you know. Um, we look at things, well, okay, Jesus Jesus is the message, but, you know, we, we, we need lots of money to be able to get that message out and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You know, so everything just gets kind of muddled, I think, to, is kind of what, to your point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, can I just say one thing that I just, as I'm, like, yeah. we, me and my husband watched it a couple nights ago and. I'm feeling everything that Nova has said that Cynthia has said about this movie, but um, we as a family are, have just been reading through the gospels again together. And we've just been taking time to like quiet down from like the noise of social media and like entertainment videos, YouTube, whatever music, and just been wanting to like simplify. So of course we're like, ah, we're going to watch this movie because it's going to make us love Jesus more. And so as, as we're watching, like, and as I'm thinking now, I'm like, everything that I'm reading about Jesus in the Gospels, his character, the people he hung out with, um, the people that he broke bread with, that he touched and healed, and that he gave freedom, it is absolutely exactly the way that your film portrayed Jesus. Mm. So if anything, I'm just sitting here going, wow, Darren, you really captured who Jesus is, because there is not one thing that... Um, diverts from who he is in the gospels like even like even that whole that whole little segment about rio de janeiro like that really struck me because i was like i've written songs about him being my greatest possession my greatest treasure you know i i will say these things and so sometimes live my life like it but to see it flesh literally fleshed out in real life like with no comfort with no money with no backup plan it's like it's it, it, if honestly i feel like the poverty brings out the purest form of jesus's value you know what i mean so i'm like sitting here thinking about what you guys are saying thinking about the gospels thinking about jesus like who he really was and what we have like in in like book form of who he is and i'm like nothing is off what you showed in this movie and i'm just kind of like oh to me, it's so encouraging. It's so like, I've experienced this man too. It like backs my up my own experiences of, of God. And it's going to back up so many people's experiences of Jesus. So I just want to encourage you with that. I think it's, you're successful in showing the God man. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, I, you know, Darren, I've been in church ministry for 28 years with my husband and, you know, 
I think church can just rip the Jesus right out of you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I will say, you know, I've seen so much dichotomy and pretentiousness within the church, which makes me so sad. Like sometimes I just, um, I just weep for the church. But um, watching this, and to your point, Christina, just um, in Brazil, watching that, those, that, that segment and those pieces, I watched this also, my 10-year-old daughter watched this, and we explained some things, and it was really like such an amazing way to engage my daughter um, with life choices, and then, you know, we have this American idea of Jesus and uh, her being able to see beyond our little space um, in this film was truly eye opening for her. And, um, but I will say there wasn't a shred of pretentiousness in this film, not a shred. And I just want to thank you for that. <clears throat> yeah, you know something, Darren, and I, I mean, I, I, I want to get your comment to what Nova has said, but I want to um, kind of put an exclamation point on, I think, the most powerful, or one of the most powerful moments in the film for me personally. And it may be because, look, you know, uh, Girl Club is a place for everybody, right? But I'm also, I, I also have regular women here who sit at my side every week and who have committed to sharing and living out the gospel and teaching others through our, our personal experiences, right? And a lot of times in the last year, those ex experiences have been really, really, really painful to watch. And as someone who loves, you know, my sisters in Christ, it's been hard to watch them go through things that maybe I've gone through, but I, but maybe I have a thicker skin in some ways because I haven't been in ministry my whole life. Jake Hamilton, who was in this movie, who is a friend, who is a brother in Christ to you and, and mm -hmm. a friend of ours. He's a close friend of yours. We, we, I believe met Jake through you more than likely. And, um, there is a powerful moment in the film where he apologizes on behalf of the church hurt that so many have experienced around the world. And it wrecked me. Like it just wrecked me because I think what he's touching into is a very real place inside of people that is afraid to admit that they've been hurt by church because that in some way might be some admission that they're struggling with their faith in God, but they don't have to be the same. You know what I mean? Like we can be hurt by church and hurt by people who have held God's name in their mouth in an incorrect way. And so why did that make it into the film? I think I know why, but I'm curious from your mouth, Darren, why was it important to have that moment with Jake in a movie about Jesus? Well, <clears throat> I think... To, to exactly like like you just said, I think it's one of the most important things that is never talked about. You know, that's why I always I, I keep saying when you, that Jesus isn't church. It doesn't mean we don't go to church. Um, we you know we have to have fellowship with each other, and and you know there's there's a lot of good that comes from it. But I, I think the world has kind of gotten to a place uh, where that that's what they think it is. I think Jesus is is just a ch is church, and if you go to church, then you know, then you know Jesus, um, but you know I th I just think I I think we've talked about this in the past, Cynthia. You know I have a, I have a movie that I'm going to make someday called Hypocrite, and uh, it, it's going to basically be about exactly what you're talking about. It's going to be about how yeah you, the biggest the biggest knock against Christianity is that we're all hypocrites, and my answer to that is um, yeah you're right, um, and that's why we need Jesus so much so much more. <laughs> You know, and so I just think a lot of time, you know, there's a David Wagner who's in the movie. He has a really great statement that kind of dovetails into this where, you know, he talks about what what blasphemy is to him. And it's not just, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain, but it's actually, you know, um, speaking, speaking about and for God without the nature of God. 
um, mm. you know, and, and just in representing, representing God without actually no understanding his true nature. And that's where we get into trouble. You know what I mean? With people who don't actually have not actually had an encounter with Jesus. So they actually know what he's really like, you know, they just see rules, you know, and they just see, you know, it's kind of this framework, this, this religious framework that they, that they operate in. And it's, 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 it's only a part, it's like a part of the story, you know, but if that's, if that's what you're representing to the whole world and add on top of that, you're also possibly just a, you know, a horrible person. <laughs> we, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people in, you know, in Christianity and especially in, in leadership, we're just, they're just not super nice people. Um, you know, and it's, and Jake even talks about that. It's like, you know, any kind of spirituality, spirituality will just kind of amplify your kind of awfulness. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so you just, it's just a melting pot of like all this, all these things that we do wrong. And it, it just stinks that that's the representation of Jesus that most, most of the time is at least that makes the news, you know, but, uh, that, that kind of gets, you know, I don't, the whole thing's just kind of twisted. That's why I just wanted to make a movie about Jesus only and get the politics out of it, get, you know, the controversies out of it. And let's just focus on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And you did that effectively. Um, I would like to help people understand, uh, for those of you who, might be meeting Darren for the first time uh, on this stream or on this or, or podcast. Um, I think it's important to kind of set a little context, Darren. You were going along, living your life, and all of a sudden you get told to make a movie about miracles. Um, <laughs> would you introduce people a little bit to the background of how ordinary dude in Chicago gets completely rocked by, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit, an angel telling him to make a film and you kind of going, I've never done that before. And what are you talking about? Like, really, like, how do you get here? How did you end up here? <laughs> well, I'll give you the short version because otherwise we'll be here all day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, no, when I, when I first started making these films, uh, let's see. So back up, I was... Um, uh, became a college professor at 23 years old. And so I was kind of just my, my life and my faith was very much in my head. Okay. Um, you know, the, the worst thing you can do sometimes to, for, to, to th kind of thwart your, your relationship with God is become an academic because everything just becomes head knowledge. And so, you know, I, but I was, by the time when, when God called me to make finger of God, um, I was, I think I was 30 years old. And I was barely, I mean, barely holding on to my faith. Um, just had, I, I was just, I'd grown up in the church and I just, I was very bored by it. It was, I just remember thinking so many times, like, is this, is this it? Is this seriously what this is all about? Is just going to church, um, tithing and trying to like be a good person. Like that's the whole deal really. Like, and I was just so just, I just kind of become very disillusioned, I guess, by just Christianity. Um, I always believed I was never going to stop believing because I had, I'd had enough experiences with, with, with God to know that, that Jesus is real. But um, I just was kind of planning on just holding on for dear life until the end, basically. And um, <clears throat> then I, you know, uh, long story short, uh, I had a radical, radical encounter with God um, up in Toronto and uh changed literally changed my life forever uh had it was had literally like talked to an angel it was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me uh, but then also just had a real a, a, for the first time a real true revelation of the father's love for me and that's what kind of like started i you know finger of god started out i thought i was making a short film um about just weird stuff that christians believe but uh then it just sort of turned into this bigger and larger thing and then I finished it and, you know, I went back to teaching. I didn't, I mean, there's no marketing plan. It was just, I just did it out of obedience and, you know, made the whole movie for like 20 grand. Uh, and then just, yeah, just put it up on Amazon and kind of walked away and went back to teaching. And then it just became this massive, God just breathed on it and it became this massive underground hit. And, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of copies later, it's, it's still going strong. It's crazy. Yeah. But that's kind of where I started. It was, came from a very skeptical, kind of background um and honestly i'm i'm still i'm still very much a skeptic um i don't but 
just a, a much softer one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta take, I take umbrage with. No, you're not. I think what you're a skeptic of is the same thing I'm a skeptic of. I think the girls will get this too. Um, I'm a skeptic of people. I'm not necessarily yes. a skeptic yes. of the board. That's a great, that's a good distinction. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. And the reason I make that distinction is because I was, I, I was in, you know, we were talking about it before we started filming. I just am coming back from a really powerful, <laughs> powerful relationship with Jesus changing trip to Israel. At one point on one day, we were at Yavashem. Yavashem is the Jewish Holocaust Museum in Israel, in uh, Jerusalem. I mean, there aren't, there aren't enough words to condense for this podcast. But what I will say is this. I made a statement walking through that museum crying. I mean, I, I mean myself and two girlfriends of mine, we literally cried through the whole tour. I mean, our, mm -hmm. our lovely Jewish guy who was taking us through the museum probably thought we were nuts because we kept going, oh, my gosh. This mindset is happening now in America. Oh, my gosh. This thing is happening now in America. It wasn't necessarily anything specific against Jews or against anybody. It was the mindsets that set the stage for this kind of human just atrocity, right? Um, by, by humans against other humans. And I said, wow, history repeats itself. And she looked at me and she said, no, you're wrong. History doesn't repeat itself ever, mm. but people do. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is where we all get skeptical about God, because so many people have held the name of the Lord in unrighteousness, which the Bible warns against. So I think, I think that one of the ways that I've seen you truly live out your faith, and it's, it's, it's personal for all of us, right? When we love our children, when we love our families, when we love an animal, when we love anything, we will get tested in how we live out our faith. Inevitable. So one of the ways in which I've seen you live out your faith so powerfully, and you've been on my sessions uh, TV show before on TBN, you've been on, <laughs> you've been on, whatever little platforms God has given me a number of times. And my goddaughter, your daughter, Serenity, has mm -hmm. also been on. And I know through the years, you know, as she became a teenager and you guys were sort of hitting the, oh my gosh, you know, our teenage daughter mode, you know, which, you know, a lot of us parents, we go through that, right? Oh my goodness, my kid's a, you know, teenager. You go through whatever you go through. But there was a point that you were very worried. And in this film, you and Serenity chose to get real naked about the truth of her struggle, her rebellion against the church, and her actually finding Jesus again through your films and through the process of making this movie, which is the most, like if it never does another thing, to be quite frank, I think as a father, you probably go, okay, I already won. I won, yeah. you know, but would you talk about that? Cause I think it's so powerful. Yeah. I mean, she really, I mean, we've, we've gone to about, let's see, I think we did about four showings in, in churches around the country before this June 6th event. Um, and, you know, every single person that I talked to who, who watched it, they all say the same thing. Serenity's part is that she's the star of the show. I mean, her part just wrecks everybody. And, um, you know, I, I just as an aside before we get into what you're talking about, um, I would just really encourage if, if there are any like parents who who have their own prodigals, um, you're going to want to come see this movie. Uh, I've so many, so many, I mean, mothers came up to me in tears saying for the first time in their life, for the first time, in like 20 years, they have hope again for their kid, um, you know, who'd walked away from God or walked away from from the church and. Yeah, it's really, and if you can get your prodigals to it, that'd be even better. Because I mean, you know, movie theaters are a good place to go that's not church. So, but um, yeah, to your point, I mean, she she was she had gone very very prodigal for a, for a few years, and um, you know, I don't think I had a full like the full understanding of how kind of 
the dark places that she was going to. I didn't, I didn't quite, I don't, I don't, that, it's only after the fact that she started telling me some of this stuff, but um, no, she, you know, so I basically, I knew she was in a bad spot. And so I, I basically hired her, you know, she's always been interested in, in photography and media and stuff like that. And so I just hired her to, to basically help with the audio for the movie. And uh, just because I know what making these movies did to me and I'm changed because of these films. Like I'm a completely different person because of just because of making them. So I was just hoping just a little bit would catch, catch on to her or something that spark something. I don't know. Uh, Cause I knew that we were going to be seeing a lot of amazing things and meeting a lot of amazing people. So yeah, I just basically brought her along. She, she was a part of the entire process. And, you know, again, it was, it's over a three year period. So it wasn't like just, you know, a couple months and boom, but there's just this God was just orchestrating this very slow process of, um, as she, I love how her words in the film, she calls it a seduction because he was just so like gentle and slow and like knew exactly what it takes to kind of woo her back to him. And, you know, just by the end of the film, I'm, by the end of the filming process, she was radically, 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 I guess, resaved, but, but just, just radically saved. I mean, she is on fire right now. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. unbelievable. She's at Bible school in Dallas. I mean, she just is, she loves Jesus more than anything. And when we started the process, she wanted literally nothing to do with Jesus. I mean, she was going out, we went to Vegas to shoot and she was, I didn't even know this. She was sneaking out at night, taking the rental car to go buy weed. You know, and I'm just fast asleep. I don't know what was going on, but it's just like she is a completely different person. And uh, I give her all the all the credit in the world for being willing to just lay lay herself out there and be like, yeah, this is who I was. And um, you know, and and people come up to me and they'll tell me like how hard that must have been for me. You know, as like a person in in ministry, I guess you would call it, to to kind of put that stuff out there. And I'm just like. It didn't. It didn't require any like courage on my part because I'm just. I don't know any other way than just to be real, right? Like, and I think mm -hmm. that's where a lot of times, Thank you. you know, leaders get in trouble because they, you know, they want to hide the. And we've all heard the horror stories of pastors' kids, preachers' kids, right? So it's, it's a joke. Right? I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like. Why are we hiding this? You know, it's so stupid. Like we're all just on this journey together, and it's like, if we're not honest, then what's the point? Yeah, yeah. It's I. I know why they're hiding it. It's because it's it's fake imagery. It's because you know people get afraid when they ascend to a certain level of position or platform that any imperfection in them or their families will be seen as something that delegitimizes their ministry or something that makes them look human. And what they're really doing is making themselves look like they're better than others. They, they're making, they're, they're selling an image of themselves as perfect. And when you sell an image of yourself as perfect, all you're selling is a perfect lie. And then you have yeah. to keep that perfect lie up. And the reality is that our very existence is a perfect lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why well, we need Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's funny is the exact opposite is actually true. The more you, the more vulnerable you get with people, the more power comes with it. You yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. that's why everybody said like the most vulnerable part of this film is, is my daughter and it's everybody's favorite. It's what's, it's, it's the driving force of the mm. power behind the film. Yeah. And I just, you know, we all, we have mutual friends, Cynthia, who, you know, in ministry, who, you know, kind of gone off the, off the deep end a little bit. And, and the biggest problem that they have is they just won't admit that they're wrong. Right. You know, they won't, they won't admit that, that, they, that this prophetic word wasn't, wasn't from God. It was, they screwed it up. And it's like, if you just did that, like nobody would leave your church. Right. <laughs> right. But it's like, it, it's, just, no one would be crazy. offended. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, what are we doing here? Like, it's crazy. Right, right. Well, it, it look, I think it, it's authentic, right? The secular world uses the word all the time, authentic. They're, they're Tammy, I just saw someone uh, 
make a comment um, who I went to high school with, who's one of my oldest and dearest <laughs> friends. And uh, I love you, Tam. By the way, she's someone we need to have come on as a guest. This is a powerful woman of God. So shout out to you, Tammy Valdry in California. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Tam. I love you. Um, but I'm glad that you're here. And um, I, you guys, like, if we would just, I think, be real, it, it's, it is, Darren, you nailed it. It's the thing that the world is pegging for. That, you know, and, and we've allowed secularism to co-opt the word authentic. Oh, I'm living my authentic self. I'm in my authentic life. And it's like, there's nothing authentic about a perfect self because there is no perfect self, <laughs> you know? So the, the, the most power you're going to get uh, in authenticity is the power of admitting who you really are, what your flaws are, what your strengths are, and what you need to actually be better than what you are. And that is all about Jesus. And mm -hmm. there, Miche, Miche uh, Watkins, who's a regular, has written in a couple of questions, Darren. And before I actually, I'm going to save, Miche, I'm going to save your question about how you can see the film in the UK until we get down to the end of the of the uh, podcast today, because uh, Darren, I want you to kind of address how people around the world will be able to see the film at some point. But she has a question and she says, okay, what happened in Toronto, Darren? <laughs> it's a very long story. Yeah. Um, so I, I basically, I went there, uh, I, I, it was in the height of kind of their big, uh, you know, revival that was happening up at the Toronto church. And uh, my family was going there and just getting really rocked. My aunt and uncle, if you've seen Finger of God, you you know the story. My aunt and uncle went there. Um, their marriage was completely falling apart. And it was kind of a last-ditch effort. Like, if God can't do it, nothing, nobody can. So they walked in normal people, and they walked out um, with both with gold teeth, um, just miraculous gold teeth, which is the weirdest thing, still one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen. And, um, you know, but and so I, I, I was very skeptical of, all the stories that I was hearing. Um, I did not like the, I, I'm super, you know me, Cynthia, I'm super chill, right? Like, and uh, all the, the, sh the shaking and the laughing and the char the charismania just really turned me off. I didn't like it at all. Uh, and so, but I kind of was dragged there against my will. And um, yeah, basically I uh, had a very, very, at the, it was the last night, um, I had a very powerful encounter with an angel uh, named Breakthrough. And uh, basically he, he, he told me in, in no uncertain terms to, to make the movie that I was trying to avoid, which was Finger of God. He said, make that movie. And uh, after that, I had an encounter with, with God because at that point I thought I, was going, I thought I was losing my mind because I'm like, you know, people like me, college professors, we don't see angels. Like that's, that's what the weirdos who go to these conferences do. They're the ones who see them, you know? And I was like, I, I think I'm losing it. And uh, yeah, and God basically, I'd been running from God my whole life because I was terrified of him. I was terrified of what he was, was what, what he was going to take from me and what he was going to make me do that I didn't want to do. Um, and so I basically lived my life trying to find what I call the sweet spot of Christianity, where it's like you do just enough religious stuff to make you so that you don't feel like a total spiritual loser, right? But then like you keep God at such a distance, at enough of a distance that it doesn't get dangerous. Because I, what I saw is the people, and especially when I read the Bible, I saw how he treated his friends. And I'm like, I want nothing to do with that. I, I, I'll just, I'd rather just get in by the skin of my teeth so I don't have to like do all this crazy stuff and, you know, become a missionary and have to move to Africa or something like that. And I just was not going to do it. So, um, yeah, so I basically, but then I just always thought God wanted something from me. And what happened, the, 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 the vision that changed my life is the first vision I've ever had in my entire life. I remember I was upstairs, I was in like the kind of the, the balcony area and I was, I just said, God, what are you doing to me? What's happening? And he, he it was, I guess you call him an open vision. I don't know. It's just this played like a movie screen. And uh, if you've ever seen that old movie, The Natural, uh, with mm -hmm. Robert Redford, his old baseball movie, um, mm -hmm. at the, and that final scene of that film is is uh, Robert Redford and, and his son in a field of wheat that playing playing catch with baseball. And that's the picture. That's the video that God brings up. And it's it's me and God in a field. Um, and, you know, for me as a kid, the, the, the best memory I have of my dad is when he, he would, we'd play catch. You know, he was an artist, and so he'd work in his, in his garage in the studio, and I'd always go, and, like, hey, I'm nine years old. I'm like, hey, Dad, can we play catch? And he'd always say yes. He'd stop whatever he's doing just because he'd go, I'm 
five minutes, I'll be bored. But, you know, it, but for me, that was the height of, of being a child. It was like being able to play catch with my busy dad. And um, so I, I was, uh, this vision comes up and it's me and God in a field and, and God, oh, this is all he said. This is all he said was, do you want to play catch? And then he threw me the ball. And I was, I mean, I was a puddle. I mean, for 15 minutes, not, not a word was spoken. We just played catch. And I was just crying like a little baby. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I remember him, it kind of the vision ended and I heard him say, stand up. So I stood up and he said, walk to the edge of the balcony. And so I walked there and he said, now look at them. And I looked down and it was this massive conference. I mean, there's thousands of people there and they were all just, it was charismania to the extreme. And everything that I'd just been spent the last three days judging mercilessly. And I just looked at them and he's like, he put, he put new glasses on my eyes. And I just, what I saw, the, all these people who were, you know, you would look at them and think they're like the super spiritual ones. But what all, what I saw was hurt and fear and pain and doubt and abuse. And I just saw all the junk, all the stuff that he sees. And then the last thing he said was, will you make it for them? Will you make it to show my people how much I love them? Mm. And uh, at that point, I was like, God, I'll... I'll do anything you ask at this point, like I'm yours. So that's how it all kind of started. And, and I got to tell you, you know, I'm so happy because your yes to Jesus has helped millions of people around the world um, say yes. You know, and I often say, I've done a lot of really cool secular TV work stuff, but I've never done anything that I'm more proud of than just saying yes to having my name attached to this movie, you know, because if I can help, I mean, you, you know me, I mean, I'd help anyway, you know, I, (laughs) you, you went on the journey of getting Lenny uh, Kravitz (laughs) to be in Holy Ghost. And (laughs) oh, Tammy, since you're watching, Tammy went to high school with us and um, that includes Lenny, my proverbial brother, God love him. And that was a journey. And I remember, I discovered your films because of Lenny. So just to like back up, Mm. here I am. I was raised a normal Catholic Catholic. I got rocked and saved and, and, you know, born again um, when I was in my 20s and in a mess of a situation uh, in Italy. And that's Prodigal Daughter. That's that book. Anyway, I get back now, fast forward years, and I go to drop my young son off in uh, Kansas to go to college. And um, we were only supposed to stay a few days because of what God would do in those few days. We ended up staying five years, got to experience being a part of revival at the University of Kansas um, and and got to see my son get set on fire and, and filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the gifts. And all of it really had so much to do with the finger of God, your first film, Finger mm-hmm. of God and Furious Love. I was standing um, in the sort of condo apartment at, at, on the campus that we were staying in the week we went to drop you know, my son off at, in college. And I get a call from Lenny. He had gifted me these two films. And now Lenny, when he's on tour, loves documentaries. So he watches a lot of documentaries to pass the time. And he calls me and he goes, yeah, I sent you something. And I said, yeah, I I know. What are these? He said, "Mm, they're two films, you know, two documentaries. He goes, I want you to watch them because I really need a normal Christian person's opinion because they're a little out there, you know? And I'm like, okay. He's like, I mean, like they're way out there. And I'm like, (laughs) okay. So, and I'm like, yes, and I am a normal Christian, so I'm going to watch these movies. So I watch these two documentaries and I'm basically like, huh, wait a minute. And I'm, I, you know, I say something to my husband, Roger, and I'm kind of thinking even Roger's going to be like shocked. He's not. And that's when I began to learn a whole bunch about my own husband also, because he starts telling me about the Jesus movement AKA the film that's out right now, The Jesus Revolution and Lonnie Frisbee and Chuck Smith and Signs and Wonders and Miracles. And I'm like, okay, but I'm still in this struggle in my mind because I have these two films now and I'm, I'm, I'm dialoguing with Lenny about them. Like, yeah, they seem really real. Like I believe this, 
but I mean, I don't have a grid for this. I'm not sure how to believe this. Like, and really in the back of my mind, all that translated to, oh God, do I show these to my son who's now saved and hungry for Christ? Cause I want him to be a Christian, but I want him to be a normal Christian. I don't want him to be cuckoo. <laughs> like I don't want him to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and not have any friends. Cause this stuff, this stuff is a dividing line. This will make you one of those people or not. And so I'm in the kitchen wrestling with this one day. And as I'm wrestling with this, manna from heaven begins to fall all around me. You guys watch finger of God. You will get it when you see it. So now I'm standing there and I'm literally, manna's falling. And I'm little white flakes, for those of you who may not know what I'm saying. And I'm looking around thinking, okay, there's gotta be a vent on top of the the stove or something and it's blowing breadcrumbs at me like this doesn't make any sense to me and it wasn't i knew i was having a supernatural moment like what you got told to go and film in that movie and i i just got down on my my knees and i just started crying and the holy spirit basically was like if you will take this journey with me it's going to change your lives plural me my son and and my husband and that began those films began a journey that did and has changed my life and um it's an it's i mean i watched your movies set an entire student body on fire and send them out to heal people as kids because they wanted to do what jesus said in the bible and darren it's just you know it's it's beyond an honor um to support you it really mm -hmm. is and I know I meet people all the time who say that about you, you know, about your films, but it really is. And I, if you could have anything happen um, from this film, you know, what would it be? What would be the, the exclamation point to this journey for you with this movie? Um, it sounds super cliche, but it's true. I mean, I just want people to meet Jesus and, and, as many as possible to, to, for, for Christians to see it. There's a, there's a fine line of making this movie that I tried to walk of making something that would reignite Christians who maybe like, they just kind of forgot their first love a little bit. Um, and, you know, and it's just, it's, it's become more church than Jesus. Um, but then also just to, to introduce people who have no idea who Jesus is to, to the true Jesus and to get saved. I mean, that's really, at the end of the day, the, the whole point of this movie is just, to, is just to visually show you what Jesus is like and who he is. And at that point, it's up to you to do, to decide what to do with that. But uh, that's it. I mean, I just want people to meet him. Yeah. Amen. Um, okay. Christina Boudreau. You are Darren. She she is the she's a wise young sage who doesn't speak unless she has something to say. And while she while she hasn't seen the film, I know that she has something to say at this point because um, I just know you that well, CB. So and I don't want to get out of I don't want to get out of here without getting I don't know your feedback. What's your what's your take on? The God man, the, the conversation, Jesus around the globe. Christina is a part of the Whosoever's uh, with Ryan Reese and, and Head, oh. Brian Head Welch. Dar yeah. Darren's friends with, with uh, and has actually just met. We're trying to coordinate uh, CB with Ryan um, so that yeah. he gets the film promoted too and gets Darren on his podcast and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But all that said, what do you think, Boudreaux? Yeah. Darren, I just want to say that um, your films, I've, I watched, you know, The Finger of God and some of these other films. And the biggest thing that I, you know, I just was in tears at the beginning because I think of, um, you know, this generation of youth. And that's what, you know, like, you know, me and Head and Ryan, that's what we do. You know, we live in the public schools, like mm -hmm. we're reaching the youth right where they're at, you know. And most of these kids have walked away from God because um, they've been hurt by church, you know, and they have this view of Jesus that's so incorrect. And I think of just what I've had to go through with church and 
I love, I, I'm so excited to see this film. I'm dealing with mold issues in my house last couple of days, but for you, I just love that. Um, I just think of your film being like such a healing balm of Gilead to the hearts of a generation that has been so that will not walk into a church building because of hurt or whatever, or, you know, the, how the media paints Christians, right. But who will find Jesus simply because of who he is through your films. And it's so needed today. And even for you, Darren, like my question for you is like for to a young person who maybe has been hurt by church, you know, who has been maybe rejected by church because of, you know, how they look like, you know, so many people now reject people from church or look at people weird from walking into church because of how they look like, right. Or whatever, like from this film of what you've discovered about the Lord, how would you encourage them about who the real Jesus is? Because I feel like that could be for someone today. Um, maybe church is hard, but maybe like you just saying, this is who Jesus is. Like, what does that make sense? Like, what would you say to them? Yeah. I mean, what you're talking about is my daughter's story in the film. Yeah. I mean, that's why she walked away. Exactly. She's, she's way too much judgment. I mean, she's an 18 year old, 17 year old girl trying to just figure things out. Right. And, you know, you make stupid decisions, but you know, where I live here in the South, you're not allowed to really make stupid decisions <laughs> according to the church. And, and so, you know, she just, I mean, just church leaders, you know, hurting her and, and, you know, basically like she gets shunned from youth group because of this decision she's making. And it's just like, okay, well, screw you guys. That's kind of where, how she kind of just responded. I think that's how most, most kids respond. Um, and, and I don't necessarily blame them for that, you know, but at the end of the day, what, the only thing that brought my daughter back was an encounter with, with God, was an encounter with Jesus. And when she finally met, oh, this, this, is, this is who, this is the reason I'm here, is to, is to, to, to be, become friends with, with God, to become friends with Jesus. And it just melts away all the, all the crap you've gone through because it's like you just realize people are people, are people and they're always going to screw up. Um, but Jesus never will. And so I would just encourage any, any, anybody who's just struggling, especially if you, if, if you're dealing with hurt from the church is, you know, first thing you need to do. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're serious and you just want like, look, if God's real, I want him. Uh, first thing I do is just forgive, just forgive, you know, and forgive the people who've hurt you. You know, maybe you don't have any relationship with them, them anymore, but you gotta, you have to walk in forgiveness. Otherwise you're going to be the one who's getting torn up. Um, but then the other Besides that is really, I would just pray, just ask God if you're real, show, like, show me, you know, like meet me. And, you know, he will, he, he, he absolutely will. It, it may take a little time. I don't know. You know, God works in mysterious ways, but um, that's why I would just say, just, just ask him. It's kind of like Bill says in the movie, you know, just, just ask him and, but be prepared. You know, if his answer is yes, I am real, be prepared for, you know, the steps that you're going to have to take uh, when that happens. But um, that's, I mean, that's because you can't, the, the problem is you can't force anybody to, to love Jesus, you know, and um, you can't, you can't control your kids. And it just, it just makes things worse when you try to control their behavior. So it's like, you just have to, you know, for the parents pray for them. And if you're, if you're in the middle of it and you think if you're willing to give Jesus one more chance, and realize that he is not church. He's he's Jesus. He's a man, and he's alive. Um, just pray and ask him. Yeah, you you mentioned as we as we kind of get down to the end of, of today. Um, you mentioned forgiveness, and you know the the forgiveness thing is honestly was the critical place. I I think that we started because. I remember, you guys, I'm laying on my couch. Here we are in the middle of the pandemic. I'm, I'm on the couch in Laguna. And when I say on the couch, it was still the good part of being on the couch. Like we're a couple months in, a few months in. It was, and my husband and I are like, whoa, we kind of needed a vacation. I mean, this is weird, but we'll take it. 
So, you know, we're on the couch, we're binge watching our whatever and, and enjoying a little bit of a, a little bit of downtime. And, um, and then everything explodes with George Floyd. I will never forget what I felt when I saw that video. And um, the country blew up. I mean, the country blew up. And at some somewhere through all of that, I had this dream. Apparently, at the same time, Darren was having this dream that we needed to go to Minneapolis to Minnesota to the site where George Floyd was killed and filmed there. And I didn't even really know why God was telling me that. And I certainly do not direct the director. Darren is very led in his movies, but I was like, well, well, Darren knows me. I was like, I, if I have an opinion, I'll share it. It may not be right, but I was like, <laughs> I wonder what he's thinking about this. And sure enough, you know, we get on the phone and he was like, you know, I think, and, and it was, and it was good. And so I was on that shoot and, you know, I have to tell you a lot of what the media gave us at the site of the George Floyd murder, you know, um, was a lie, a shock, fake news, the media lying, <laughs> woo woo, newsflash. It was a complete lie. When we got there, we found peace and forgiveness occurring. And we found this, this pastor there who kind of rocked both of our worlds, who a black man married to a white woman on a platform in the middle of the place where George Floyd was killed, preaching radical forgiveness based on his own story of radical forgiveness of the man who murdered his father. Now that's all I'm gonna say, watch the film because I don't wanna go too much over time today, but I do wanna say this, Radical forgiveness is radical release of anchors that the enemy will put on your life to keep you from being able to run freely in freedom and happiness and joy and in all that God has called you to do. And radical forgiveness is not the kind of forgiveness that any of us want to walk in. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good. But the, I think what happens is that people think that forgiveness means letting the other person off the hook. Or it means in some way saying that what the other person did was right. It was okay. It was mm -hmm. deserve it. No, it doesn't mean any of that. Forgiveness is simply taking your right to judge and giving it to God, our savior and judge of all of mankind. And it's cutting it off from your life so that you can say, okay, God, I don't want this weight and anchor on my mind, my heart, my soul, my life anymore. I give it to you. And we've got to get out, get off the judgment seat. Only God sits on the throne of judgment. And we got to trust that he is a just, faithful, and faithful judge. And that he will he, he will deal with the situations that have hurt us in ways that we can't even begin to understand. And some of those ways are way worse than what we would do. And some of those ways might seem merciful and kinder than what we would do or extend. But he is God. He is God and he knows the end at the beginning. And, you know, um, I love, I love the comments. Um, you know, um, Tammy, Tammy has a young relative that she, who's quite embittered right now as a result of church experiences. I know the power of your films and what God has done in doing through them. Yeah. Um, Darren, you have people who can't wait to take their relatives, you know, to see this film. Um, Miche is asking how she can see this film in the UK. And that's a good question. Uh, Darren, would you address how people around the world will be able to see the film after June 6th? Yeah. So um, basically, if you go to the film's websites, thegodmanfilm.com, um, it's, it's almost set up. I mean, we're, we're, we're at the final, uh, within a few days, this will be set up so you can actually do like pre-order this so from kind of june 6th for about a month afterwards um there's going to be an option where you can actually um, stream the film it's almost like a like a household rental um and so that's going to be the, the the best way for people overseas to to be able to see this film um because it'll it, it won't be released to the public until probably sometime in august or september um but yeah but if you want to see it early see it kind of in the in the release window um, there is an option for you where you can actually, um, you'll be able to, to stream it right in your house. Um, and then you can actually also, I think, pre-order the DVDs or, or the, um, 
uh, not the DVDs, pre-order the uh, digital, a digital copy of the film as well. Yeah, uh, I was going to so. say DVDs, Darren, let us yeah, not yeah. date ourselves. Now, there's some people who still use them, apparently, but... <laughs> You know, God love you. <laughs> Streaming is way easier for sure. Yes. Um, Nova, Christina and Christina, um, I don't want to go without asking if you have a final word or comment today. Reynolds? It's all been said. <laughs> Just watch the movie. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Watch the movie. I, I, I would say my my inclination would be to say that Jesus is the hero of this film. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, Novi. Awesome. Boudreaux, can I get a witness? <laughs> you have 10 with me. I'm really excited, Darren, to show this film to a lot of uh, young people in my world who are searching for Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. and not specifically church. Cause Jesus is really what they need, you know? Yeah. And so I'm so excited. And so thank you so much just for your obedience. There's many souls attached to your obedience to make this film and the other films. So I'm really excited. That is well said, Boutreau. There are many souls attached to your obedience, Darren. Your yes has been uh, the saving grace for millions of people around the world. And I just want to thank, uh, I mean, the multiply, I mean, the so many diverse ministries, you know, like <laughs> we can't get it right around the world because guys, sometimes we can't even get it right in the church with the different denominations and the different belief systems about Jesus and who Jesus is. But when a film touches the heart of critical truth at a, cri at, at a critical mass time, I think the results are just like net zero victory. Right. And so that's why you have places like uh, the Belonging Co. in Nashville um, and Joel Olstein Ministries and uh, all of these completely diverse, large ministries and small ministries, the Calvary Chapel uh, ministries all over this country, for sure, all supporting this movie and screening this movie and being willing to promote this film, you know, because they looked at it and it, it whether you believe women should preach or women shouldn't preach, whether you believe in the Holy Spirit or not the Holy Spirit, whether whether you you know whether you whether you're pre-trib, post-trib, or mid-trib. Now I'm speaking to the church. It does not matter. The truth of who Jesus is is evident in this film, The God Man, um, by Darren Wilson, my friend, the filmmaker, director, and uh, Darren. We gotta go, but. Uh, where do you go from here? And I think we need to get Serenity on before the film, before the movie uh, comes out. Should. on should. Yeah. I think we might have to have Seren on. So um, maybe that'll happen next week or the week after, but certainly before June 6th. Um, I think you might have to hear from one of the actual stars of this film, who um, <laughs> who is an unsuspecting star because she is the very thing that we all need to be, um, that I pray that we are every day. Um, okay with being transparent about our pain because we serve a God who is bigger than our pain. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks, Darren. Thank you. And I just want to just encourage everybody just again, just remind them June 6th, it's only one night. So um, get your tickets now. You go to fathomevents.com and then you can just actually search for the God man and type your zip code in and it'll tell you all the theaters that, uh, that are playing it near you. So you can get your tickets right away. Um, and, uh, the other thing that we're actually encouraging people to do is the Lord kind of gave me this idea of, you know, my movies became what they were because people would buy like just tons of copies and just hand them out to people, whoever God kind of laid on their heart. And, um, so I'm we're really encouraging people to buy, not just get tickets for yourself, but like buy a, a few extras and print them out and just carry them with you, you know, not to necessarily give to your friend, buy some for your friends too, but like for, for strangers and just whoever God highlights you, if it's in the grocery store or CVS or whatever, and you just see somebody and just maybe, you know, God will highlight you and just give them, Hey, here's a movie, go see it. There's a free ticket on June 6th. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't want this. I don't want these theaters to be filled with just a bunch of Christians. You know what I mean? That, that's great. I hope and I think they're going to get really touched. I want some, I want, I want to see some souls, you know, in there. So, um, yeah. And, and I just think that 
the Lord knows who needs to see this. And, um, uh, and so just, and he'll, and he'll show you. So I would just encourage people to do that. If, uh, if God puts on your heart to do that. Amen. Yeah. I have girlfriends who are buying, uh, you know, 10, 15 tickets a pop and they're going like maybe a group of eight of them and then gifting the other tickets, you know, so someone else can take a group. So, um, encourage your churches to, you know, talk about the film, announce the film, um, fathomevents.com, F-A-T-H-O-M, like I cannot fathom how amazing this film is, <laughs> fathomevents.com, uh, put your zip code in, you can look for theaters near you, and then buy your tickets there, um, and then uh, we really want to pack the theaters on June 6th, guys, it's all about June 6th right now, but for more information about the film, where to see the film after, and everything else, you can check out Godman Film. Dot com. The, the Godman Film. The Godman Film. Yeah. Dot com. And that's going to land you at over at uh, Darren's um, to get all the information that you need. You can always write in and ask. I will share, you know, updates and what have you as we move forward with it. But um, be praying for June 6th. And uh, I let us run long today. So thank you guys for being patient. Um, thanks to Life Audio for hosting us. We um, whether you're listening on podcast or watching us live stream, I just want to say thank you. Until next week, I'm Cynthia Garrett. This is Girl Club. It is a place for the guys, too. Real girls having real talk about real issues while seeking to walk in real faith. Our guest today has been Darren Wilson, the director and filmmaker of the film The God Man. Hitting theaters June 6th. Get your tickets now. We love you guys, and we will see you soon. Peace out.